Hello, Lisa Scola, and I am here on day three of how to communicate effectively series that we're having. And it was brought to my attention or asked, I should say, that I um, maybe make some reference to some of the reading material that you can do um, while you're trying to learn how to communicate more effectively. Now, I've had a very busy week and I didn't have time to write down <laughs> specifics. But I can tell you that if you go to Amazon or you're at the library, just search how to effectively communicate. There are a ton of authors out there that can help you with this and give you certain ideas, um, even when it comes to social media and everything that I'm discussing. So, you know, search it, see what you can find. I know myself, I spend a lot of time on self-help self -help books. So in doing so, a lot of those do mention how to communicate effectively in different search situations. Now today, I really wanted to work on the impact of social media. Social media, text messaging, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, any of your apps you may be on for your community, like uh, Nextdoor, anything like that. You really want to make sure you're reading what you put up first, um, read it out loud, maybe ask yourself, hmm, how did that make me feel when I read that? <laughs> okay, because that's going to give you a pretty good idea on what kind of reaction you're going to get back. A lot of how we communicate, really, sometimes it's not bad. You can put stuff out there and it still might come off wrong or it might not be the message you're trying to send. Great example, if you're using your social media platform to build your business and you're going to want to keep it so that you attract people to you and your business. If you're complaining, if you swear a lot, if you just sound like you're not a nice person sometimes, <laughs> people are probably not going to be real attracted to wanting to come and join your team or even buy anything from you. Um, most people, I think, when it comes to selling anything, for instance, buy stuff because of you. They buy because they like you. I go to some stores because I like the atmosphere. The pricing might not even be that big of a deal, but the atmosphere is beautiful. And a great example would be if you go to any consignment shops or like Goodwill and stuff like that, if they're cluttered and, it, and it's and it, you get in there and it has a, a, a weird smell or anything like that, absolute turn off to me. I will not spend a lot of time in that store. I sometimes not even shop at some grocery stores because of the scent. So a lot of times that's it. Or if their employees, when you go there, are not nice to you, you may not go back. I'll use McDonald's for an example. Several of the McDonald's is in our area. Their staffing has a lot to be desired. They are not nice people. I have watched them be very rude to people even in front of me um, or my myself have gotten like poor service. And that all comes with communication. If somebody is happy and friendly and they smile, sometimes it's not even that great, but, but because you had great service, you might tend to go back just because it's convenient or whatever the case may be. So these are great examples of, of making yourself attractive to others. So I cannot stress enough when it comes to communicating how important it is. Now I'm not saying you can't share personal stuff on your social media. By all means, you want to make it somewhat personal about your life or maybe your children. I, I like to always involve what I'm doing. Now what I do is Avon. So Avon is always incorporated in my life. I consider it a lifestyle. It was a lifestyle change. My products are Avon that I use. Um, most of my closest friends are within the company somewhere, whether it be on my team or somewhere within the company. So it is pretty much a lifestyle. It's always somehow included in what I'm doing. And I make it fun. I make it something that's positive, something somebody may want to reach out and, and read or do or act on because you want people to act on your posts. So that is something to really, really keep in mind when you're doing this. I mentioned yesterday how you can start changing your ways of communicating with your family and your team and your customers. I've had disgruntled customers call me before, mainly because I'm still in the phone book. So 
I sometimes get a customer that it has nothing to do with me or my service. They may just be calling me because they think they're calling Avon and they start right off complaining that they didn't get this or that or their Avon rep didn't deliver their product. Something happened. And again, I cannot stress enough how important it is it to listen first. I can listen to somebody and what they have to say and I like to then be able to respond first by taking a breath and saying, well, you know what? I'm so sorry that that's happened. Let me explain to you that, you know, my, my impact on it or what I do as a rep or how I would handle it and then better steer them in the right direction. Or if they are my customer, we can better take care of it from there. Usually it is a lack of communication between us, either a text message or maybe a message that was left or when I first met them or whatever. And it's, and it's very important to get that cleared up before you could move further on to, to get to a resolve and make it better. So hopefully those are things you can start working on as well. Listening to what you say, practice your words, look in the mirror before you're going to do something. Have you ever had to like um, give a speech or talk to somebody or go in an interview and they'll tell you, sit down in front of a mirror and practice what you'd like to say, you know, watch your facial expression, see what are you putting out there? You know, are you carrying around an RBF all day long? Are you looking like, like you just want to be beating everybody in the world, like kind of like this? And you because <laughs> that's probably not the message. You could be saying wonderful, great things, but you could be coming off very unhappy and maybe not friendly. And my phone's ringing. <laughs> so this isn't going to be real long today. I am going to try to gather some of the material that I know I've used in effective communicate, um, communicating and see if I can um, share with that with you this week. Not sure when we're going to do a live, but again, I do that in my Success with Scola group and the link is always on this video. So feel free to join that group so you can catch it live. I do also put it in my YouTube channel when it's finished. So I hope you're enjoying this series. I hope you're working hard on your communicating skills. You really, really, it's not, it's not hard and it's going to make such a big difference just in, in how your tone is and your body language and, and saying things that are always, um, up, you know, it's, you know, starting maybe with a compliment before you start saying something, you know, if you do have a criticism and you want to, it's constructive and you want to sometimes put it out there, you do want to make sure you're telling them the positive as well. Everything's not a negative. And, um, and it's always just not always about us. It don't always make it about you, you know, make it about them, you know, and think about it that way you know, taking that breather, stepping back, not always having to respond right away. My other example before I leave you, because I don't want to forget to use this one, as a, for instance, if you ask somebody, like, let's say you just ask someone, hey, can you run and do X, Y, Z for me today? Or is that a problem? If you get a response back from somebody that's like, yeah, okay, I guess I'll do that now. How does that make you feel? Because it makes me feel like I just put somebody out and I'm not really interested in helping me now. I mean, I just with, I will withdraw that right away and think twice about asking again. I don't care if it's a child or if it's something you're supposed to do or if it's a significant other or even somebody in my business. I will just mark that off and not do it. So I try very hard if somebody asks me to do something to say, okay, yeah, I would love to do that. But I can't do it for like another 10 or 15 minutes or better yet. When is it exactly that you need that done? Because sometimes I'm not going to be able to do it, but I certainly don't want to make them feel like it's a huge burden to me. And, you know, it just is not a great way to communicate. You want to make sure that you're putting it out there in a more positive fashion all the time. So these are just some simple things that you can start putting into your life right away. You can start implementing them as, you know, as right now. <laughs> so take a look at your social media, see what kind of messages you're putting out there. You can usually tell by the responses. Also start really paying attention to how you're answering people when they ask you anything actually. And that makes a big difference. So hopefully it's helpful. I'm glad you are following the series and, um, and I'm already trying to think of what we're going to do next because I enjoy these series. It really helps me, you know, it helps me be a better person as well. Makes me look deep into what I'm doing. So thank you so much. And I hope you have a fabulous day.